Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Lock, and I'm back. I just wrapped up my third cookbook, the Simple Comfort Step-by-Step -Step Instant Pot Cookbook. That's the yellow cover that'll be coming out in April of 2022, and it'll be here before you know it, believe me. Um, and I'm back. I'm here making new recipes now, and it feels great to be back on the camera. Uh, and uh, let me ask you a question. Who loves spinach and artichoke dip? Who loves chicken? I feel like this hand was not feeling the love. All right, I love both those things. I love spinach and artichoke dip. I love chicken. Wouldn't it be nice to turn a spinach and artichoke dip into an outrageous sauce to drape all over some delicious chicken cutlets? Hmm, I think it would. So let's do it. And how easy is this to make? Well, it's as easy as taking your hat off and putting it right back on your gray and head. So let's go right to the Instant Pot and do it. Spinach and artichoke chicken. Oh yeah, I said it. I went there. Let's go. So we're gonna start off with a yellow onion, just a regular size yellow onion. And we're gonna dice it up into pieces just this size. All right, now let's move on to the chicken. So the first thing I wanna do with my chicken is to take a large plate, like a typical size dinner plate, and add about a third of a cup of all-purpose flour to it. Now if you're keto, alternatively, you can use coconut flour instead, or if you're gluten-free, you can use something like quinoa flour even. And I'm gonna add like a sprinkling of some black pepper, garlic powder, and seasoned salt to that mix. And then just shake it out on the plate so it gets nice and spread out. And then just mix it up a little bit with a fork so the seasonings are evenly distributed with the flour. Shoosh, perfect. Now I'm gonna add in my chicken and I'm using about two pounds of thinly sliced chicken breast, which we also know as chicken cutlets. You see, they shouldn't be any more thicker than this, about a quarter of an inch or so. And now with three plates of all the same size, one with our chicken on there, one with our flour mixture, and just one that's plain, we're gonna take each chicken cutlet in stations here, take it, and we call this dredging. We're gonna dredge the chicken that's coating it in flour, and just make sure it's completely coated, not to the point where it's like ridiculously so, but just a nice dusting of the flour mixture on our chicken, that's perfect. Now this is station two, station one's the raw chicken, station two is the flour mixture, station three is our plate to rest our coated chicken on, or dredged chicken, you see, dredged. You don't have to dread dredging, it's not that bad, truly. And it makes a difference when we dredge, because once we saute it in the pot, it gives the chicken more flavor and a little bit of a nice texture. And we'll do that as soon as we're done dredging. And there we have it, all of our dredged chicken. Perfect, we're gonna set this aside. And now like Heather, let's motor on over to our Instant Pot. I'm going to add in two tablespoons each of extra virgin olive oil and some salted butter. All right, now I'm gonna come down to the control panel on the beautiful upgraded Duo Plus model, hit the saute button, and make sure I'm on the high setting. To do that on this model, I adjust with these arrow buttons for temperature, that's low, medium, high, I want it on high. Um, and if you don't have that kind of button on yours and you only have a saute button, you hit that to switch. Or if your model has an adjust button, you hit that to switch. So each model is a little different, but it's self-explanatory. And then I hit the start button if your model has that to get going. If you don't have a start button on your model, it'll automatically start after doing nothing for a few seconds. Now once the butter's melted and the oil's heated about three minutes or so, we're gonna take our chicken breast and in batches, we're gonna sear them on each side for about 90 seconds. Okay, and after 90 seconds, we're gonna flip it over. You see it's just lightly browned. And another 90 seconds on the other side. All right, and now we are looking good. I'm gonna take my chicken that's been seared on each side, Perfect, just like that. And then just continue the process with the remaining chicken cutlets. Hmm, that one looks like the state of New Jersey a little bit. Look at that. How funny is that? Okay, and there we have it. All of my chicken cutlets, nice and lightly seared on each side. They should look just about like that. A little bit of brown on the edges, and even if they don't even have that much, that's fine. We just want to give it a little bit of a sear. Now the pot might look a little dried out and caked on with some of the chicken we just sauteed on there, but I'll tell you right now, it's all gonna change when we add this onion. It's gonna release some juices and it's gonna get things flowing. Let's add that in there. Okay, so as soon as we add our onion, we're gonna just start to saute it a bit in the pot. You're gonna see there's gonna be some flour caked onto the bottom, that's fine. That's all gonna come up in a few moments. All right, and after about three minutes of sauteing our onion, we're gonna add in three cloves or one tablespoon of crushed garlic. Minced garlic will work fine too. And you could totally use this stuff from a jar. 
as we add that garlic, if it, especially if it's crushed or minced with a little bit of oil or juices in there, we can also continue to scrape the bottom of the pot a little bit. It's fine if it looks a little bit brown right now. Don't worry at all. That's all going to change. All right, now it's time to add in our broth. I'm going to add in one and a half cups of chicken broth. And now we can go to the bottom of the pot and we can scrape off any of the brown bits that are going to come right up in the broth. Which is important that we do that right now because we don't want anything really stuck to the bottom. You see? Everything is nice and clear now. And I can just show you to prove that. Look. Much better than it was. Everything's fine. If it's like this a little bit, that's even fine. But we could get all of that up if we wish. We call this deglazing. When we add some liquid to the pot and then we scrape any bits off of it, that's deglazing the pot. So you can also call scraping, whatever. Now you see the pot now? Like this? Guys, this is perfectly fine. Perfect. Now we're going to season this up. I'm going to add in one teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic powder, and seasoned salt, and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm going to stir that around in the pot. Make sure it's mixed in with the broth. Now I'm going to take my chicken and then just add it back to the pot. And we'll just do it in layers, just lay it on top of each other. That's perfectly fine. Okay, there we have it. If any extra oil on there, add it right back in. And now it is time to top this with some spinach. And you can use baby spinach or regular spinach, but we want to add a lot of spinach. About a pound of it, guys. Now it's going to feel like you're really packing it to the brim, and you will be, but spinach cooks down to nothing. It's going to literally wilt into nothing, and this is, after all, spinach and artichoke chicken. The artichokes, by the way, will come later. All right, perfect. And there's all my spinach again, completely packed to the brim. And now I'm going to put my lid on top of the pot. Make sure that I'm in the sealing position. Some pots already seal themselves automatically once you put the top on. And now we'll come back to the control panel and hit the cancel button or the keep warm cancel button if your model shares those buttons. And then we're gonna hit the pressure cook button, guys, for eight minutes and then that's it. Pressure cook away. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're gonna perform a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so I'm gonna take my lid off. Ooh, look at all that stuff. <laughs> totally giving my camera a facial. And now I'm going to take some tongs here and I'm just going to swish all the spinach to the side because we want to keep as much of that in the pot as possible. And I'm going to take my chicken and put it to a serving dish. It's okay if some of the spinach makes it over with the chicken. They're going to be pretty attached in just a second anyway. And you see I told you that spinach would cook down into pretty much nothing. Okay, and there we go, my chicken to a serving dish. And now we're going to go back to the pot and focus on making this an unbelievably decadent spinach and artichoke style sauce. Now I'm going to hit the cancel or the keep warm slash cancel button if it shares the same one. And then I'm going to hit the saute button again and I want to make sure I'm in the more or the high setting. Alright, once it's bubbling, I'm going to add in some dairy here. I'm going to add in a half a cup of heavy cream or half and half. A package of Borsin or something like Alouette even. Guess what? I only found this in the market today and that's totally fine. You can use that as well. It's a little bit larger. It's six and a half ounces, but a spreadable herb cheese or a garlic herb cheese is a garlic herb cheese. It doesn't really matter. The Borsin's a little bit smaller, but you can add all of this to the pot. And I'm not cheating on Borsin, I promise. I actually have no partnership with them as of the time of this video. And I actually have a recipe where you can make your own type of herb cheese. But whatever. This stuff is pretty much all interchangeable. A half a cup of Parmesan cheese, two cups of shredded mozzarella cheese. I know it's a lot of cheese in there. And of course, it wouldn't be spinach and artichoke chicken without our artichokes. I'm adding a 14 ounce can of drained artichoke. These are quartered already, but just rip them up a bit by hand. And if you want more, you can add more. And you can also reserve some for the end for some garnish. And now we're going to stir everything up in the pot until everything becomes nice and combined. All the cheese should be combined into the sauce. And then let's just make sure that our sauce comes to a bubble because we want it to get nice and heated. Some of the dairy we just put in there was probably a little bit cool. We don't want the sauce to be cool. We want it to be a nice warm to hot, of course. And now I'm going to kill the heat by hitting cancel and then just leave it on the keep warm setting. All right, now you see my sauce is nice and creamy. It's the perfect consistency, and it's definitely to the temperature I want it to be at. So now we're ready to drape this over the chicken and serve it up. All right, and there we go. Draping it all over the chicken. When I was writing the books, people were like, Are you sure you want to use that word? It kind of connotates clothing. And I'm like, yes, but just the way that clothing drapes the body, sauce drapes the chicken. And there we have it, guys. Spinach and artichoke chicken on a platter, all ready to serve. Let's do it up. And here it is, guys, my spinach and artichoke chicken on the plate. And look at this, it's so tender, I can just cut the chicken with a fork. And we're gonna try this out. Here we go, wow. 
This is so, so good that it's stupid how angry I'm getting over it. If you love spinach and artichoke dip, and if you love chicken, you just found dinner. This thing is beyond, I use it a lot, don't I? It is sublime. Mm. Mm. You know what you can do with this? As amazing as this is on its own, of course you can serve it over rice, cauliflower rice, quinoa, uh, some pasta like egg noodles or something. Get some nachos. In fact, hang on one second. All right, here's some chips. I'm gonna put a little bit of chips on a plate here. Maybe a few more. All right, cut my chicken up a little bit. Ladle on a little bit more sauce. And voila, spinach and artichoke chicken nachos. I don't know where this stuff comes from. I really don't. It's evil is what it is, but it's also absolutely divine. Mmm, mmm, mmm. The chicken, the spinach, the artichokes, everything is happening right now. Mm. And I'll tell you, even if you just have it as a chicken dish and you want to crumble some nachos on top, or tortilla chips, that's a nice touch. Good to the last dip. I mean, bite. See this? See this? No shame. Look in the plate clean. My friends, if you enjoy these videos, check out PressureLawCooking.com because I have a lot of videos there. Also, I'm a cookbook author, a two-time number one best-selling cookbook author with my original orange book, which is the step-by-step -step Instant Pot cookbook, and the lighter step-by-step -step Instant Pot cookbook, completely different books, not the same recipes in both books. Also, the thing about this book that makes it so great, apart from the amazing recipes, of course, is that every single recipe has beautiful fuller beautiful color photos for every single step so there's no guesswork as well as a final shot of what everything will look like. Also, the original orange book is now available in certain countries in South America, in Spanish, as well as Mexico, and soon to the United States. I'll let you know when that happens. Look, it's called the Paso a Paso Instant Pot Cookbook. I love that. That's amazing. It's surreal, honestly. I can't believe that. And the measurements, yes, are changed into like uh, metric. I also have a new book coming out, the yellow book, which is the simple comfort step-by-step -step Instant Pot Cookbook edition just like this would be in there, not this one specifically, because I just made this one and the book's already done. And of course, facebook.com slash pressure cooking like that page. Anytime a new recipe comes out, deals and items, tips, things like that. And uh, follow me on the other channels like Instagram, um, TikTok, which I, I, I keep saying that, but I don't really do it. I'm like this, I'm so exhausted. And um, Pinterest, Twitter, sure, whatever. Thanks again, guys. And remember, the next time you want to take a dip, take it and turn it into a chicken dish. All right, absolutely spectacular. Mm-hmm.